Over here. What's up, Meta Nerds? This time we're going to be taking a look into another specialized member of Kuat's All Terrain lineup, the All Terrain Pod Walker. We'll go over its purpose, its use by the GAR, and how the Maker himself brought this walker to life. But first, let's lift the metaphorical hood and see what made the ATAP so unique. Standing at an impressive 11 meters or roughly 36 feet, the ATAP would tower over the ATTE, being over double its height and just under six Dexter Jetsters. In our world, this walker would be about the height of two male giraffes, and surely just as graceful. From turret to tail, this thing was 15.4 meters long, or over 50 feet, making it longer than a T-Rex, and just under the length of three Felucian Jellygrubs. Its impressive size didn't stop it from sprinting around the battlefront, with a top speed of 60 kilometers per hour, or about 37 miles per hour. While that might not seem fast, the top speed of an Abrams tank is 45 miles per hour, and that thing is on treads. The ATAP is still faster than the Separatist's favorite tank as well, the AAT, which only has a top speed of 34 miles per hour. We don't have a weight for this walker, but we do know that it had a cargo capacity of 200 kilograms, or about 441 pounds, which is just about 882 ears of corn, and only about a quarter due back. A two-day supply of rations was also on board, just in case the battle rages on longer than expected. With no shielding system, the ATAP relied on its thick plate armor for any and all defensive needs. Now onto the main event of this beast, the three cannons. From top to bottom, we have a medium blaster cannon, operated by an exposed gunner and a swivel turret, the powerful mass driver cannon, just like the one on the ATTE, and finally a smaller heavy repeating laser cannon on the underside of the hull, which was meant for dealing with smaller threats. With all this firepower, you might think the role of this walker would be frontline armor, and we'll get into its role in a moment, but I really want to break down that big gun, the mass driver. Unlike other weapons in the Star Wars universe, the mass driver is essentially a slug thrower, firing a monstrously vicious Durasteel round that was moving at hypersonic speeds. The range was far, even further than the naked eye could see, which is why the ATAP was equipped with a very impressive targeting system, as well as a sophisticated suite for data relay. This kind of power would require a lot of stability, and since the ATAP was essentially just the forward section of an ATTE, that meant it needed that big third leg in the middle of the body to provide a more stable firing platform, ensuring that mass driver hit its targets without the entire vehicle tipping backwards. It also had integral recoil compensation systems, as well as a top of the line gyro stabilization system, ensuring this walker would remain standing. Because of this walker's deadly targeting capabilities and one-shot potential, the clones affectionately nicknamed the ATAP the Sniper Tank. The ventral cannon was a repeating blaster, mainly used to fend off infantry, and the turret on the dorsal side of this thing was used against incoming enemy vehicles that came too close for the mass driver. All of this could be yours for the low price of 90,000 Republic credits, which means that you could have three of these walkers for just the price of one ATT, and even some spare credits left over for a few hundred cups of Jawa juice. Let me pause to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into their network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists that can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences when it comes to therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's through chat, text, or a video or phone call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule therapy sessions when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch therapists for no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you'd expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom-picked for you, there's more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. Get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash MetaNerds. That's BetterHelp.com slash MetaNerds. I've also linked them down in the description. Now that we know the in and outs of this walker, what exactly are we supposed to do with it? It was not intended to be a frontline assault craft, but instead to serve mainly as a highly mobile artillery unit. Now you might think the Grand Army of the Republic didn't need any more of that, since that role was nicely filled by the AB-7. However, if we look closer, the ATAP solves a few of that cannon's issues. First, as a walker, it can maneuver through friendly and enemy shielding, something the AB-7 could not, being propelled via repulsor lifts. This made shoot and scoot tactics an even more viable strategy. The AB-7 had another glaring weakness, it did not have any means of self-defense should the enemy get too close. The ATAP once again corrects this flaw, making it a more versatile vehicle to have in your armor lineup. 
And we're not alone in thinking that, as many clone commanders incorporated this tank into their legions, including the 41st Elite, the 327th Star Corps, and the 91st Mobile Recon Corps, which is just a few among many others. Kuat made this vehicle available well into the Clone Wars, perhaps seeing the same flaws we just mentioned in current Republic artillery, and the ATAP quickly found its way into the Outer Rim sieges. Just as quickly, we see how the Jedi Generals misused this craft in their combat strategies. At least one was destroyed during the Battle of Horain, and their role as long-range artillery was seemingly completely ignored by the wisest Jedi of them all, Master Yoda. On the Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk, Masters Yoda, Luminara, Gri, and the 41st Elite were preparing for a massive droid assault on Kachiro Beach. And perhaps it was in their haste to unload the Venator that we see several ATAPs taking point alongside the infantry. Once the battle begins to rage, we still see these walkers charging into combat alongside the mighty turbo tanks. While the ATAP could be used to support larger armor, it is strange to see it so front and center, especially as the swift corporate alliance tank droids are closing in over the water, and the droid gunships are swooping in through the flak filled skies. Aside from this battle, we do see them in use in a more proper way. On Felucia, under the command of Master Ayla Sakura and Clone Marshal Commander Bly, we see two ATAPs bringing up the rear in a column of armor. Supported by the heavy ATTE and the nimble Swamp Speeders, the ATAP looms over the less protected ATOT in a seemingly defensive position. This makes more sense than whatever was happening on Kashyyyk, and I'm sure this grouping of vehicles would have turned the opposing droids to scrap had the infamous Order 66 not been given out, and General Sakura shot in the back by her once loyal men. It's never confirmed when the Emperor ordered the production of these walkers to end, but we do know that sometime around the historic Battle of Yavin, the Alliance had gotten their hands on a few of these walkers, heavily modified them, and sent them out into war during the Battle of Tatooine, which ended in a rebel victory, proving that this old relic of the Clone Wars could still pack a punch. Legends say that some criminal organizations made great use of this old walker, with both the Hut Cartel and Zan Consortium using the ATAP extensively to grow their underworld empires. By the time the First Order came into existence, the ATAP's legacy was still being felt as the Urban Assault Triped Transport, or UATT, was inspired by that old design from Kuat. So with its history in the books, let's see what we can learn behind the scenes. George Lucas himself requested that the armor of the clone army be diversified for Revenge of the Sith, and so the ATAP was born. Initial concepts for this walker were done by author and artist Alex Yeager, who called it the Pod Attack Walker, or PAW for short. And much like the UTAT, the ATAP does not appear in any on screen Star Wars media outside of Revenge of the Sith, its first and only appearance. As much as we love the ATTE, it would have been nice to see the full array of vehicles the Republic had represented in a show all about the Clone Wars. However, unlike the UTAT, this vehicle does pop up in a few comics and games, most notably Empire at War. Even in the base game, the ATAP is used by the criminal factions as their main source of armor. It also appears in LEGO Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars, as an air support option. And speaking of LEGO, the ATAP has been brought to us by the building company on three separate occasions, with their latest model arriving in 2019. Hasbro also got in on the action, giving kids and collectors a gorgeous model of the walker, and a few repaints in the years following. It's good to see that despite its minimal time on screen, or pages, the ATAP has left its mark. This wraps things up on the All-Terrain Attack Pod. Please hit that like button, leave some comments, and subscribe. It's the best way to help me out. But most important of all, remember, not always the tactical genius Yoda was. And the Force will be with you. Always.